forward. And there we go. So what's going on, everybody? Wednesday here on a beautiful April 1st day out there. You're going to be 52 to 55. Get outside. Walk around the neighborhood. Stay away from everybody, but walk around and enjoy some fresh air. Y'all going to need it. It's going to be a long marathon before we get back into school. But things are starting to see a little bit of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So not as bad as I thought it would be. I was thinking school's over for the year, but I have a feeling the way uh, the scientists and the professionals and the um, experts are talking, um, it's going to get a little worse, a little bit worse, a few, few weeks, maybe a week or two more worse. And then we will start seeing the hopefully sharpen down turn of what's going on out there. And then we can go back to school and enjoy our normal lives again. One can only hope and pray as hard as I have been to stop being cooped up in this house. But I'll tell you this, like I said, I've been going out as much as I can, doing a little running, a little skating, a little biking, whatever I can to stay relatively active and get out of the house to not feel like a mole living underground. So it's important for everyone. Uh, make it a, uh, a a mission in the next five days to take advantage of any of these days that are um, bright and sunny and above 50 to get out there and enjoy yourself. Please make sure of that. Anyone on Instagram, please make sure you jump over to the code, um, which is right up here at the top. If you can see it there, 161-130-378. So Alexis and Trey. Make sure it's right there, Trey. It's right there. It's right there. One six one one three zero three seven eight. If you don't know the code, then make sure that you go on to our Google Classroom because on the Google Classroom, I post the code every Monday morning. So if you travel back here to Monday morning, you see the code. It's right here. Got you. Yes, of course. You have to get me. Um, looking like we have a, uh, more people joining very quickly today, which is awesome. Maybe they figured yesterday was a day off. And if in fact you figured yesterday was a day off and for some reason, and yes, for some reason you may have missed yesterday's lesson, have no fear. Mr. O'Toole has got your back, son. Look what I did on our YouTube channel. Ding, 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 ding. I post the notes the full video with the tutorial and everything that we do right here, audio production class on Monday. There it is. And audio production class here on Tuesday. And today I will post it roughly around uh, about a half an hour to an hour after our session. I will save the video and I'll repost it. So it's always there for you. And if you miss something throughout this week and you want to go back and review it for the test on Friday. Yeah. It's all there for you. And I'm going to continue doing that until I'm told not to or until I can't physically. All right. Uh, waiting for a few more people to hop on it. Uh, we're up to 13. That's good stuff. Still a lot more people to go, though. Uh, I just did the numbers yesterday. Uh, there's 35 in the class. And so having 13 is nowhere as close to having everyone that is necessary every single day. So. Again, if in fact you know anybody, and trust me, these people will be corralled. We will get them. Like cowboys at a rodeo, we are going to wrangle in these calves and get them all to be on board every day participating. You guys that have been participating for the last two weeks, congratulations. You guys have been doing a great job. Thank you very much for tuning in and going through this. You, of course, will be on track to be just fine here in the fourth quarter. Again, speaking of the quarters, uh, third quarter grades are out. They were sent in to our guidance counselors who are entering them into systems and sending them to homeschools. If, in fact, you are curious about your grade, I had asked you to DM me on our Instagram page or email me, or uh, I guess you can send a message through this. There's a private messaging through the Google Classroom that you can do. So any way that you can contact me, let me know if you want your grade. I break it down for everybody. I gave a few people their grades. Probably about five or six people have asked for their grades, and I have sent it on to them. Don't be scared. It's just a grade. 
And then, of course, now that people are coming back, we're finally corralling and wrangling everybody in. Um, we should get pretty much everyone in the class on board. Because truthfully, in the end, all you need is a telephone, a cell phone, a cellular device that has or can get the uh, Zoom app, which is free, and the code is available to everybody. Again, it's posted in our Instagram account, um, and it will be every week, and it's also posted here in our Google Classroom. And I'm pretty sure there's a Google Classroom app as well. So, you know, do yourself a favor and uh, make sure you join everything. Stay on track. And speaking of being on track, um, let's see. There are some people that have handed in projects. So again, all you people that you see here, y'all are missing your projects. All these people, all these people. So please make sure you hand in project 8B. 8B is still due. That was soundgym.co, your ear training, and then filling out the top sheet. And of course, the top sheet is available to you on the Google Classroom. Ooh, that was weird. Your top sheet is available to you on the Google. What the heck is going on? Um, so yes, if in fact you, uh, you need a top sheet, then you can print that out. I said, of course, if you didn't have a top sheet, you could just handwrite it on a piece of paper. You need to have all of the 15 days or really 14 days of training. And then I need a screenshot or a cell phone picture of your account details that give me your SPI score. It also tells me how many games you played, how many workouts you had. That's also some important information. So as much as the SPI score is important, um, that whole page is fairly important. And if you already had sent it to me and I already graded uh, don't worry about it now because the SPI is based upon the workouts you did, the progress you made, and all the other stuff I talked about back in the classroom. All right. So there are still 10 people that have not handed in Project 8B. So please make sure you do that. Very, 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 very important. Um, and then, of course, we know that on Friday, um, 8C and 8D are due. Again, those top sheets are here. Um, Robbie, congratulations. Uh, you are so far the only one that have turned it in. And if you see, there are 19 people finally in our classroom, but that's again, certainly not the total number of kids in our program. So, uh, we have a, again, a big drop off between people that know about the Google classroom, people who are avoiding the Google classroom, people who can't access the Google classroom, which is nonsense, but it definitely is possibly a thing. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll wrangle all those calves, like I said. All right. So every, and by the way, yeah, Project 8C is here as well. And again, Bobby, Bobby turned it in. So congratulations to him. He has been sitting pretty for the last week or so, not having to worry about any work. He handed everything in, which is great. Great to feel stress-free, a relief off your shoulders, which is magical sometimes. All right. So make sure you get those in by Friday. And look, this classwork is going to build up and it ain't going to go away. It's not going to disappear. Wherever those grades land, they land. That's what it's going to come down to. So I hope uh, that you guys finish up what you're supposed to do and then make sure you're moving on because on Monday, that is April 6th, new work will be assigned. New due dates, new everything. Now, also with that said, uh, I mentioned that uh, we are going to be taking a test on Friday. Yes, we are going to be taking a test on Friday. So, um, what I have done is started making my template quiz here on the Google Classroom. In order to take the quiz on Friday, you need to be here, logged in to the Google uh, Classroom on Zoom. And actually, we'll probably end up taking down the Zoom more than likely for about 20 minutes or so. And then I'll bring it back up uh, to just see who else is uh, or haven't handed it in, who else is logged in. So we'll start on Friday by logging into Zoom, and then I will release the test to you uh, sometime around 10:15 uh, on Friday, and then you will take it online, and then you will submit it, and that will be your grade. And I will uh, be able to see uh, in real time pretty much how people are taking it, the results that are coming in. Um, so we will absolutely be taking this logic test at home on Google Classroom. So please, if you're in the Zoom chat today, make sure you also are part of the Google Classroom, which I believe most of you are 
as far as I can see, most of these people in here have in one way, shape or form joined the classroom. But again, you cannot avoid the work. So please make sure also you're doing 8B, 8C and 8D. If you have any questions before we move on, please raise your hand inside of the Zoom. Um, I do not have the raise hand option on my computer, so I cannot show you, but I believe it's somewhere down in the bottom. Um, there's a clap as well, a thumbs up, a thumbs down kind of stuff. Um, need a break, clap, yeah, well, those things I can't do. But uh, again, if anybody needs to ask a question now, forever hold your peace, please do so. Oh, secretly unmuted everybody. Oh, someone's in the shower while listening to the lesson. That is fantastic. All right, I'm going to take down the um, the Instagram live um, and peace out so we can get this going. And there we go. And do, do and done. Okay. So here we go. I don't want anybody getting free lessons. Come on. All right. So, uh, yep, there's that, and there's that, and that's great. And I'll put the, uh, yes, I promised you the notes today. Today I will post the notes on our Google Classroom. I will also try to get them up on the Instagram, but I don't know if I'll be able to do that today. Uh, but I definitely will have them up on the Google Classroom. And today's lesson will be up on YouTube, and the last two days of lessons have been up on YouTube. All right. Awesome stuff. Let's talk about some things, shall we? So I had a project here that we can work on. You could see beautifully the people that created this project have very nicely colorized this project. Isn't that cool? Now, let's take a listen to the entire project and let's see what they did and why they cut these up as they did. All right. This is a skills nationals project, a project that was done in Louisville, Kentucky for their national sixth place win at nationals. Here it is. You're tuning into 104.5 WHFN News. This is your host, Stephanie Lopez, and today we're here to discuss the topic of free college education. Free college education is a controversial debate amongst politicians, parents, and students. Believe it or not, back in the day, most colleges used to be tuition-free up until the 1960s. In this day and age, tuition-free colleges are showing up more frequently across the nation. It can be heavily argued that free education has many positive attributes. And now we have Miranda Alman from Oklahoma City. I believe free college education is an amazing thing. For example, I myself benefit from it. I don't have the necessary funding to attend the college of my dreams, nor do I have the financial support from my parents, but that shouldn't mean the opportunity should be taken away from me. There are many intelligent people out there who unfortunately cannot afford the cost of tuition. No one wants to pay over $100,000 for school. Don't continue to allow education to be a privilege. Free college is the way to go. Walt Disney World Florida is proud to present Pandora, the world of Avatar. This highly interactive land based on the movie Avatar will be the largest addition in history located in the already popular Animal Kingdom. Here, guests will be completely immersed in the extravagant glowing rainforest. It packs new attractions, one of many called Avatar Flight of Passage, which is an augmented reality flying simulator. It allows passengers to soar over Pandora on the back of a banshee. Park has recently been open for the summer of 2017, so come down to Walt Disney World to experience the world of Pandora. Now we're back with 104.5 WHFN News. Today we're here to talk about the fascinating topic of free college education. Although there are many positive factors to tuition-free college, it can be debated that there are opposing negative effects to it as well, in which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity that needs to be granted for everyone. And now we have Matthew Garrett from Trenton, New Jersey, here to support their disbeliefs of free college education. I feel as if though free college education is rather a negative thing, there are people who work extremely hard to get them to where they need to be, and they deserve the quality education that they are paying for. College really isn't it for everybody. Some, if not many, aren't really serious about their education, and then they'll probably eventually drop out. And just, uh, you know, it's a huge waste of time and money. And it takes away from those who are capable of actually succeeding. And now a brief word from our sponsors. The history dates nearly 132 years ago, back in the 1880s, where the first Louisville Slugger baseball bat was ever made. Ever since then, 
this brand has been a staple in the beloved sport of baseball. The company has sold over 100 million bats, thus dominating the market with both wood and aluminum bats. Nearly 60% of major league players use this during their games. Not only do they make baseball bats, but recently the Louisville Slugger brand has been innovating designs for batting gloves, equipment bags, helmets, and many more. Want to be like the pros? Then Louisville Slugger is the way to go. Thank you for listening into 104.5 WHFN News. This is Stephanie Lopez signing off. All right. Oh, well, we can, uh, hello. we can all agree that it was a very well done project, um, earning them that sixth place slot. Um, but imagine, you know, what it would take to get first placed from there. Um, and so what I like to kind of talk about a little bit here is some of the editing that was done. And then of course, using some of the tools that we have here, stuff that we've probably even gone over. And if you look very quickly, um, in the arrangement of the global tracks, they labeled the intro, the first interview, their Disney spot. Um, I don't know what this says, short something. Uh, negative response, I guess, is what that negative interview, the baseball, and then the outro, which is down here. So they labeled it up here so they knew what was what going across the timeline. The next thing they did to stay organized is they color-coded. They had these three tracks right here um, to be their intro and intro interview. So then they colorized that section of tracks and allowed you to do quickly delineate or discern from what that intro interview was to what the next thing was, which was their Disney commercial. All right. So then here was the Disney commercial. And of course, their Disney spot allowed them to uh, kind of, like I said, visualize what's going on within the program. Say, okay, here's my Disney edit. Here's my vocal track, my commercial VO. And of course, here's the music that goes with that. Then they colorized this section down here, the negative interview. So it was a voiceover, then another voiceover with an in my opinion. Then, of course, their music track right here. And then, of course, their negative interview with none other than me, not Trent something or other. I don't know who Trent is, but that wasn't me. Um, and then down here, uh, we have our Louisville Slugger commercial. And again, uh, it's labeled here. It's color-coded here, and then it's um, arranged up in the timeline here to show that that's the baseball. And then finally, their outro and outro music. So again, layout, organization, um, very, very important to this project to kind of organize their thoughts and ideas and to click and be able to arrange things where they want them, the order that they want them. I think it had a good flow. There were some defining technical issues with this, hence the reason why they got sixth and not first, because I think their writing was excellent. I think the um, ideas were excellent. But if anyone was watching the VU meters pop a little bit, there was some definite problems with their recordings that they had to go back in and really fix. And I'm not sure if that was at the recording level or was it, whether it was here at the mixing level. I have not really gone into this project that in depth to find out. Um, you can see very clearly, and this just goes along with my mantra, that all of their vocal tracks, all right, so this was the intro and vocal track, has an EQ and a compressor immediately put on there the minute they recorded it and dumped it onto a track, they immediately started building their channel strips, EQ and compressor. And in this case, they also use a de which was pretty good. A de as we may or may not know, is something that helps out with high frequencies, those S's and P's, not plosives, but the syllabus, syllabus, syllabus in your voice. Not good. So um, they used a female preset. Not, not very hard to do. Just grab the female preset of their de and it kind of smoothed out a lot of their vocal tracks, which definitely helped them um, do what they're doing. Uh, Wawa, you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. So the, the answer for me, like on like the logic. Yeah. It doesn't really work unless I like doing it like in an extreme level. And even when you do it in an extreme level. Yeah. It still doesn't work as like, uh, are you by any chance using one of these presets? Uh, yeah. I used the female one and, uh, I have a high hat smoother one. 
Yeah, I mean, you personally probably will not benefit all that much from a de -esser. You have a low toned voice. You don't have a lot of in your voice. No, so, so I record some of my other friend. Like I edited okay. some other friend that have like really like uh like, very lot syllables in their voice. Yeah, like you know, like girls are always like talking like, with their higher pitch yeah. stuff. Okay. So um, a, I, what I would recommend is not only starting with a preset, but here's and here's where today's lesson comes in with utilizing a loop and stuff like that. Um, I, I want you to go in and really focus on changes that are made within a plugin. And let me show you how that's done. I'm going to put you back on mute for a minute because we want, I want to start talking about looping and the importance of looping. Now, in this project, you could see peep, this particular group put the entire project in one big loop. Now, I find that really, really uh, strange unless you were trying to do that for your bounce, which is probably what they did because they had the bounces to a WAV file. But to do this normally, now I put my playhead right here around the minute and 48. If I were to push play, it jumps back to the beginning. How annoying is that? But I want it to play from here. Having a loop on during playback and editing is not very efficient. So let's just take this loop off and simply click on it. And we're going to turn that loop off because now when I put my cursor at 48, it'll play from there. All right, so let's zoom in on that track, that vocal track here, and that's this one, negative two. Uh, 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 zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. All right, so now that I have it zoomed in, I want to focus on just this, Wawa. What I would do is I would use my cycling, my loop, to loop this part. I would also solo this track. So now all I hear is this person talking. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity that needs to be granted for everyone. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity. Okay, and now that would get annoying after a while. It would, trust me. Um, so what I'm trying to do with the loop is set myself up so now I can go into my plugins. And in fact, let's just say the de for a moment, right? And I want to listen as I make changes. And let's hear what kind of changes can be made as I change my different presets. Once I have a preset that's a step in the, excuse me, a step in the right direction, um, then I'm going to go in and change some of these parameters to really uh, hone in on the problems or the change that I'm looking to make. It's not really a problem per se. This isn't a problem solver. This is a changing Thing. All right, so let's do this. Let's push play, in which I personally believe and let's change things as we do that. That needs to be granted for everyone. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity that needs to be granted for everyone. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity that needs to be granted for everyone. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful. So you can hear, and I don't know if you hear personally. Personally is the word that I really want to focus on because that's where I saw the biggest change. So now I'm going to use my loop, my cycle to go down to just that area. I personally believe. There we go. Personally believe right here. Okay. Now I'm going to listen into this. Personally believe, personally believe, personally believe. Okay. Let's go back to the original um, DS or setting. Personally believe, personally believe. And you hear the S there. Now let's listen back to it with a stronger DS. -er. Personally believe, personally believe. And you see how it really clamped down on that S of personally? See, this is where you can make the biggest amount of change in your project. I, if I want it to feel a little brighter with the S's coming through like that, then I can leave it. But if I wanted something stronger, personally believe, personally believe. and so that really now clamps down on that S. Now what I'll do is I'll end up taking my cycle and I'll drag it back out and I'll listen to it again as a whole at this time. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity that needs to be granted for everyone. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful So now it's a much stronger DS or Wawa. This is uh, really clamping down on that S of her voice. Could that help this project? Yeah, it could. I don't know if that's what I want overall, but that's what I think this would benefit from. Now, let's see if there's any other changes when I change up like to the hi-hat smoother. In which I personally believe now, still that S comes right through on that one. Let's see this one. In which I personally believe this is a wonderful opportunity that needs to be granted for everyone. In which I...
in which I personally believe. So this one's much stronger as well. So reduced presence one is very strong. Let's see what reduced presence two sounds like. In which I personally believe. This it's a little less. So it's a little softer. So what are the differences between reducing presence one and reducing presence two? Well, there's this little compare button that lets you jump back and forth between two settings. So let's go back to one for a moment. And you can see right down here, this side of the um, strength part of what I'm going to be doing. So this is representing your 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz area. And this is the focus, the high end of the frequencies. This determines how much I'm going to be reducing that area by using the strength parameter. So while I, if I were to go in and I were to say, okay, if I tune down my strength, let's hear that S pop through on this one. In which I personally believe. And that S really comes through. So now if I crank it up, let's say to about 19, In which I personally believe. and you can hear now I have more control over that S. That's what the de -er does. So again, getting to know your parameters, Wawa, is good, but also utilizing basic things like this cycle, like this loop that I've created to isolate, control, identify, and then use to kind of spin around and listen to changes really helps your edit flow. This is a big deal as an editor to go in and really identify, really get into small little bits of your recording and be able to go in and make big changes that can be applied over a clip or over a track. So using loop in that way, very, very good. So let me go back to this because this now puts the whole project in perspective. Again, remember these buttons? Hey, they're great. And unsolo that. You can see by doing that, I've now lost my cycle that I can take off. So what else can cycling do for us? Um, so I'm going to move my cycling back over to this section and I'm going to go ahead and use my um, smart snap options here to make sure that I've clamped onto the back end of this clip here so I can really hear the intro from start to finish. And I'm going to go over that a few times as an editor. There we go. I have to zoom in a little bit. Sometimes the, not sometimes, all the time, the smart snap has to do with what zoom level you're at. So now I've created a cycle where I can just go in and listen to this first section. All right. Which is nice. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to be able to just focus on this, don't worry about the other stuff, push play, and I can really go in and, and listen to this whole section here. And then we can also move that down to the Disney section and then rearrange that. And there are ways of actually making your selections based upon your arrangement. And this is the reason why we do make arrangements. Um, sometimes if we uh, use our control click or right-hand click, we might be able to actually insert silence and repeat sections between locators like for that. Um, we can, as we remembered yesterday, using um, one of those, you know, fancy editor based quick keys, we can actually repeat sections. So if we wanted this whole section to be repeated, um, we can do that by hitting some quick keys. But again, why I'm using cycle here is just to identify this section to play it back and to hear it by itself. Um, another way you could do it without using cycle is literally just line up your playhead, um, go ahead and solo both of these tracks and push play. And so, yes, you have your ability to go in and out of sections of project. And this one particularly has a lot of different sections with a lot of different moving pieces. So you're going to want to utilize the tools that you have. Um, let's talk about a couple of things here. I want to really go back to the editing of this section here. So let me do my zooms here. And I want to show you something. Uh, do, 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 do. So you can see that they've used the overlap function in our drag mode. Everyone see that? That they've overlapped, but yet you can still hear this little area here. And even though it's overlapped and it doesn't look like anything's happening, it actually is being heard underneath. So overlap doesn't delete the audio underneath. That's something different. But I don't know if I particularly like having blank audio overlapping non-blank audio. So for me to clean this up, I end up taking just the blank audio and trimming it back. And then what I like to use, of course, is my fade tool. So TA gives me my fade tool. Oh, no, that's not good. I'll make my, come on. Hold on. I'll make my... My fade, I guess I won't make my fade. 
Why can't I make my fade? Um, it's because I have this in there and we can talk about that tomorrow actually. They're takes, um, but we're going to be able to, I can't do it there. All right, well, they made it so I cannot do it, but what I was looking to do is something like that. All right, so let's say I have this and this here. Let me drag that back a little bit. If I wanted to create a clip where there is one, I'm sorry, a fade where there's one clip here and one clip here, then what I should be able to do is uh, fade them or crossfade them together like they have done here. So this is one of the crossfades they did um, between two loops. So this is a loop by itself. This is a loop by itself. And you can see they overlapped a little bit. So I would just trim it back to probably around there. And there's that loop. So let's hear how that fade works. And that took a little bit of skill. I'll be honest with you. They, they lined up the, the rhythm part so you would not even hear the cut. Here it is again. I'll actually turn it up a little bit so you can hear it better. Let's go into here and turn this up. Here it is again, sorry, let me turn it up for you. A very seamless edit that was made with a crossfade that allowed one to blend into the other almost seamlessly. I, I was really well done the way they did that one. But that's what I'm saying. Like if I come back into this clip, uh, you know, what I probably want to do is make sure that I don't have any pops or clicks in between. Sometimes when you have a hard uh, edit point here or hard edit point here and you go to make the, the playback here and let's see if I can let you hear it. It's too small for you to really get an idea of what it's like. But yeah, you could hear sometimes like a pop. And that's not a pop that's natural. That's not a pop that happened in the recording. That's a pop that was made by editing. And to smooth that over, you'd probably end up having to do some sort of crossfade. Now, let's see if I can get in there and do it. No, I cannot. So because of the way these are comped, I can't do my crossfade. The crossfades have to be done within the comp. And we'll talk about comps, uh, like I said, maybe tomorrow. But looping allows me to find different areas to identify Titions, paraticians, paraticians. and just check to see if things are working right over edits. Students, elite students, elite students. So it's not terrible in some of these edits. So there's no real major pops or clicks during these edits. Now this one's a little rough. So let me take a look ski at what's going on there. Yeah, they have a bunch of stuff going on here, and I'm not sure what they did here, but I'm sure it's part of that comp, and it is. Yeah, they have this little weird area that I guess they must have had a, a problem with it right in here. So what they did was they cut it out. They removed it from the uh, final comp, and then they did these little crossfades in between that um, to smooth it out. And it doesn't sound terrible, but it's definitely audible, and you can definitely tell something happened. It can be heavily argued. It can be. It can be. So they did a good job at masking their issue. Um, but again, not a perfect job. If anything, you know what my answer is to bad recorded audio. It is, everyone say it together, re-record, which they had plenty of time to do. Um, it seems very lazy sometimes when you make a mistake and you have to do that to it as opposed to just go back to the drawing board and record it again. All right. Uh, so loop, uh, one of the great functions of this program. Um, it's actually called cycle, by the way. It's not really called loop, but it is kind of a loop. Um, and so very quickly, if you take a look up here at the transport window, um, cycle can be activated using the C button, which is a quick key. And there are actually some options for cycling uh, by marquee selection or by region selection or by note selection. And so note wouldn't come into play until I had MIDI in this project, which I don't. But that's part of you know how it locks into certain areas up here in the timeline and how I'm able to identify areas. All right, um, let's move on to punching and replacing. Let's do a little recording here in the back end. Um, 
Well, I take that back. Let's do it here in the front end since I have my microphone that's actually working here. Uh, wait, well, check, check, check. Uh, let's see. Going to my mixer. Let me just check my input. Input is going to be input one, which is great. And come back over here and let's uh, solo this track and let's record something, shall we? Uh, this is a quick check on exactly what is going on here in this project. I could probably turn this up just a little bit. Check one, four, seven, nine, niner. So a standard recording sounds a lot like that, as you know. More than likely, it's certainly not the right interface. No, it is not. I'm going to go ahead and use the Scarlet to do this. This is where it could get a little dicey. Check. Check, check. Uh, let's try this again because I don't want to use that. And we'll do a recording. And of course, hey, that's better. Now we're cooking with gas. Fortunately, cannot. No, 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 no. Boo, boo. There we go. Okay, so uh, we, yeah, we're going to do just a quick check. I'll turn my mic down a little bit now because it wasn't quite right there. And we're going to do a check of a 1, a 9, a 7, an 18, a 47, a 64. So there's my little clip. Uh, I'll trim it down because I know it was loud there. And let's take a listen back to that. Okay, so as you can see, just a basic recording onto an audio track. Um, the reason why I soloed it is because there's other stuff in the project they don't want to hear while I'm recording. Um, I hit the R button to record. I hit the record button to start recording. Great. Let's see how cycle comes into this. So let's put a cycle on right here. And now we're still going to do the same thing. We're still just going to record. So let's do a recording. This is a check, a 1, 2, 17, 49, 72, 87, and a 94, 102. And then we go again. Hey, look at that. We are recording yet again. In cycle mode, we have many different ways of recording. Can you dig it? Can you? And we're doing it again. One more time. One more time in the recycle mode. No, just the cycle mode, not the recycle. Although it does look like I'm recycling my audio. And again, we're doing it again. And it just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. And we'll stop it there. And now look what happened when I have cycle mode on and I record on the track. Can we listen to each one? Oh, yes, we can. Let's listen to each one and see what happens. So let's see. This is, by the way, comping. We're not going to get too far with that. If I push play right now, it should be my last take. Take four is what's here. You could see it right there, four. And again, we're doing it again. Okay, so now if I want to find a different take, let's go to take one. I click on that little number there. I'll go to take one. This is take one. This is a check of one, two, 17, 49. Okay, I want to do take two. And then we go again. Hey, look at that. And then we'll try take three. And then we'll go to take four. And again. So you can see in cycle mode, um, we actually get a whole bunch of takes. And I'm going to just undo all that just to that last part. So putting cycle mode on and doing a recording allows me to record several different takes in the same area. All right. So for all you vocal recording engineers doing stuff for music, you know, cycle your music, put your verse into a cycle, maybe a few bars before and a few bars after, and then run your artist through the verse like three or four times, recording it every single time. Set the cycle, hit record, tell them you're going to do it three times and let them just go at it three times. Sometimes just hitting record and saying go isn't necessarily how an artist kind of warms up to it, gets the feel for it, um, or, or even gets into their stride. I know if I was going, you know, to do any activity, I'd want a few shots at it before I had to do it. For instance, if you were you know, trying to shoot a half-court shot at a halftime show to win $10 million, wouldn't you want a few practices first? Yeah, you would. So that's the point. To put into cycle mode while recording allows you to um, get in there and try it a few times and warm up to it and try to get your stride without having to go one at a time every, you know, five minutes from now, five minutes from now, five minutes from now, trying to get the most out of the recording. It doesn't work well. 
Um, I promise you it doesn't work well. So for instance, when Wawa said he was recording other people, Wawa, this is a great way to get people to record a really good track. Don't hit record and then hit stop and then talk to them and play it back and listen to it. Don't do that. Make them record it like three or four times using loop cycle in record mode and let them do it three or four times in a row and then pick the best one. And usually the third one's probably the best one because by that time they finally hit their stride and they're warming up to it. Here's a couple other things you should probably look at. Uh, punching and replacing. So let's first look at that because I got to get it in here um, into my uh, list. So let's go into uh, auto input monitoring. Nope, auto punch and replace is there. I want to get the tuner out of there and the solo out of there. I hate that. And hit okay. All right, so here we go. Um, we're going to take off cycle mode just for a moment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record something very quickly. What I'm going to record is just some vocals of things that I want to say. No, I mean things that I want to do. No, I mean things that I really want to say. All right, so I did that on purpose because I want to show you the importance of how this is going to work. What I'm going to record is just some vocals of things that I want to say. No, I mean things that I want to do. No, I mean things that I really want to say. Okay, so if I knew that I wanted to say... Okay, so right there is the point where I stopped and things I want to say. Then I changed my mind, then I changed it back. I don't want to necessarily get rid of this because maybe it'll be great for a blooper reel or maybe it actually will work in what I'm trying to do. But I do want to, now wait for it, I do want to punch into this area. Now to do that, I'd have to put my auto punch on. All right, so here's auto punch. You see an extra little lane pop down in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my auto punch area like that. So I put auto punch on, I stuck it and dragged it right into this guy. Everyone see that? There's another little lane between cycle and between the timeline itself. There's another little lane. And now I'm gonna record again. But I'm not gonna record back over here. I'm only gonna record in this red area. So let's take a look how it works. Hit record. What I'm gonna record is just some vocals of things that I wanna say. Things that I wanna say all day maybe while I'm eating clay. I don't know. And there it is. Do you see what happened? I was able to punch into this area. It automatically muted the old nonsense and allowed me to put in the new nonsense. And then it automatically created a crossfade. So the question is, how does it sound? Let's take a listen. So you see how auto punch works? Auto punch allows you to define an area to punch into, which in turn mutes the section that you didn't want and allows you to add new information. So instead of losing an old take and having to re-record it, now I'm going to be able to kind of chop it up a little bit and get what I want out of it basically creating a final composition, which is not really a comp, but it is claiming it as a comp. If you look, it says comp A right here. That's not what comping really is, but there is some things you could do um, using the quick swipe tool, which is over here, which means I could hide and reveal more or less, but that's again, another lesson during the comping lesson. So auto punch uh, basically defines an area to punch into a recording. And for me, some of the most, um, useful times for this feature is going to be uh, creating like solo, gu solo guitar riffs. All right. So I probably will put myself into loop record. So I'll put the cycle on and I'll record, you know, a couple of times, maybe five or six times. And then if I find a section that I like, but it doesn't blend with the section before or after, maybe I'll just keep some of the pieces along the way. I'll set my auto punch in between these sections and I'll put it back into loop record and only record that bridge section of the guitar solo that I was looking for. I know this all seems very vague in how I would go about doing things, but just remember auto punch basically will allow you to substitute what's in there. It actually kept the old stuff though. If you look at it right down here, the old recording is there. It's grayed out because you're not going to hear it, but it's still there technically. So that's very interesting. And if I wanted to reduce or hide more or less of where that initial punch took place, I can fine tune it here as well. 
Now, the key here is that it kept this audio. Let me show you what happens if you don't keep that audio. Again, we're gonna set our punch replace. Uh, I'm sorry, our, our auto punch in that same area. Again, this is the recording, the initial recording. Now, I feel when I'm doing this recording that I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that information here in the back end. So instead of just doing auto punch, I'm going to do auto punch plus I'm going to do replace. So this is actually going to replace the data that was there. Let's see what happens when I do it. What I'm going to record is just some vocals of things that I want to say. I mean, things that I want to say while eating clay during the day, should I may? Now, as soon as you saw me hit record, did you notice that the back end of the clip disappeared? It was deleted. When I put replace on, it actually will remove the section of auto punch information so I can record brand new information. And at this point, I do not have a comp. There is no composite of multiple takes here, which means I could have some sort of area here where I would get a pop or a click. And this goes back to what I was saying uh, about 15 minutes ago. So at this point, T A gives me my fade tool. And now I can create a crossfade over these two sections. So I know they're going to be smooth. Let's take a listen back to what happens. What I'm going to record is just some vocals of things that I want to say. I mean, things that I want to say while eating clay during the day. Should I may? And there you go. So there's a nice, smooth, edited comp, but not really a comp, just really two separate clips perfectly put together in natural cadence of my voice, how I would say it normally. I made a mistake the first time around. I tried to do the auto punch, and I found that it wasn't as clean, as crisp as I want it to be. So instead of just auto punching and having a comp, I ended up replacing the old audio with new audio. There is a few more things I want to show you, but before I go any further, that was a lot of information. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand inside of the Zoom chat and ask any questions about those major points. Looping, punching, replacing. Those are the three we just did in the last 40 minutes. It's really called cycle, cycle, auto punch, replace. These are all things that will be on the test on Friday. So uh, again, hope to God, even though you guys are tuned into the Zoom conference, you're paying attention. Uh, I'm not necessarily grading you based on your participation in this chat, but if you're paying attention, uh, then my hope and goal is that you will be able to get these questions right. And again, if you miss something along the way in the last half hour or so, be sure to go back to the uh, YouTube channel and watch it again and follow along. Some of the videos that I sent links to you for in the Google Classroom highlight these ideas. Um, probably a little smoother than I do because they practice them and they edit them together and all that stuff. I'm doing it live off the cuff, just showing you things. All right, a couple more things. If no one has a question, let me move on. Um, there is this idea of low latency. Now, we mentioned this back when we dealt with some of the preferences. So if I go into preferences and general, and I go into recording, if you remember the wave file 24 bit, but that isn't necessarily has to do with kind of what's going on between my interface and me. So there is really no major latency right now during my recording. If I was listening back in my headphones, um, this would be pretty much in real time. I mean, I have a set of headphones here. I'm not going to do it now, but um, this would be pretty much in real time. And that is due to this IO buffer size right here, this IO buffer size. And you see the resulting latency is 19.5 milliseconds round trip. That's pretty quick. That's faster than your brain can really discern. So you really aren't going to get a doubling or an echo or anything like that. During the recording process, and the reason why I mention it now is because we're dealing with recording, looping and cycling and replacing. Um, there are other options for this latency. If you're hearing an echo from your microphone to your headphones, that's because your buffer size is set to 1024 or 512, these higher 
buffer sizes. Now, you are going to use these eventually, but you're not going to use these during the recording process. During the recording process, you want to make sure you're using a lower buffer size. My recommendation is 128. You can go lower, but sometimes things get a little dicey because you have a lot of tracks or a lot of plugins. So for the most part, 128 has always been my go-to for recording buffer rate. This keeps the resulting echo or delay from microphone to headphones really low, low enough that you can't really tell there is one. The mistake people make is they set it very high during recording and they don't know how to get rid of it. Well, this is how you do that. Let's go back up into my toolbar for a moment. And let me just X this out for a second. Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Okay, there, I guess I'll put it back there. Um, there is a, another um, button that you can put out here called low latency mode. And so it looks like a little speedometer on a uh, moped or on a motorcycle or even in a car, I guess. So this little speedometer um, gives us that automatic low buffer size without having to travel into the preferences. And there is other options here. Uh, sorry, let me get into that options here. Get, I mean, it's not let me get in there. No, not let me get in there. So when I put this on, it automatically will drop that buffer size to something lower. Let's see if it changed it out of 128. It didn't. So that's good. So this basically will keep your echo down. It's a very easy way of um, just clicking it on and clicking it off. So why do I use this? Why would I need this here? Why wouldn't I just set why wouldn't I just say that during my recording process, I'm just going to keep it low throughout the entire recording process. And then when I go into post-production, I'm going to set it back to the higher one. Why do I need a higher one? Well, because when you look at this and all these plugins that need processing, the buffer size needs to be higher in order to handle all of these processes, all the EQs, all the comps, the DSs, the uh, mastering stuff that they put over here, which we'll talk about eventually. Uh, all of these things need to be thought of very carefully um, when doing your post-production and to handle that amount of information. Um, yeah, you need to have that higher buffer size during the editing process. But again, during the recording process, you want to keep it low. So what I do is I put this little low latency button out here and I am able to quickly jump in and out of higher and lower buffer sizes, giving you no latency. Two more things before we're done here it should take all of three minutes. Here we go. We mentioned a bunch of things uh, about the track header. We know we can put A to see automation volume. That's just hitting the letter A. We know we can do command F for flex time. Yep, we talked about that. There's uh, two others. I'm uh, sorry, we did H. Yep, for hiding, hiding tracks. I can hide it and then make it disappear, but it's still there. There it is. I'm just pushing H. Hiding, and then getting rid of the H. Um, and then, of course, there's something called lock and track protect. And we did time lock and edit lock in Pro Tools. So this is very similar, but this has to do with track protection. This is what it's called in Logic. It's called track protection. So track protection, um, if you right click on the track header, we can actually see some of the track header components. And there's things like input monitoring, record enabling, solo, mute. But then there's two other things here I wanted to show you. First one is track protect. And you'll see that there's a little lock now that appears here in the project. So if I hit that lock, that means that I can't make any edits. The track is protected and cannot be changed. Turn off track protect button to change its content. So that means I can't make a single edit. I can't move it in time. I can do nothing. It is locked down. Now, sometimes this is really good just in case you make bad selections across your project and you go to delete, and it's going to warn you that there are some tracks that are protected by your selection that cannot be deleted. And I didn't want to delete these. That's why I locked the track down in the first place. So track protect, very, very useful tool to kind of protect your tracks. Once you know you have what you want, you have the data, you have the edit, you have the plugins, you have everything you want, lock that track down. No reason not to. Let's do a little freezing. So again, right click on the track header, track header components, and we'll go to freeze. Brr, chili. Why is it chili? Because it's a snowflake. So I'm going to hit freeze. Interesting. Doesn't look like much happened. So can I edit this? 
No, says the track is frozen. What does that mean, though? Does that mean I can't trim it? Yes, it does. Does that mean I can't delete it? Yes, it does. It's very similar to what Track Protect does, um, but it actually is more temporary. So what is happening here is it's actually, if I go into here, also freezing down all of these settings. So it's not just protecting the track like it would here. Because if I were to go ahead and, and you can see a little snowflake pop up, I can't change anything here. Let me uncheck that. Here you go. Much easier. I can get rid of any, any EQ comp. I can turn them off. There goes my channel EQ. There goes my comp. There goes my DS. Even in track protect, you can still eliminate plugins. But when you're in track freeze mode, you can't get rid of them. They won't, it won't let you turn them off. I can't, I can't ditch them. I can't do anything. So it locks down not only the track and the clip and the edit window, but it now it locks down all of the settings here in the mixer as well. So it's kind of like two different levels. One's a little more versatile where you can still do some plug-in work. You can still do some routing and sends and stuff like that. And the other one is a complete lockdown of every single bit of the track. And that's what Freeze does. So like I said to you, in three minutes, there's the last two components of what we're talking about today. I will take any questions about anything right now, uh, starting with logic and then ending with anything about the classwork, about what's going on, uh, or anything you want to just divulge to us as a group. Good, bad, or indifferent, as I always say. Oh, yeah, I don't have permission to do that. <laughs> Nothing, huh? You guys, you guys, I hope some of you are paying attention. I'm, I'm going to just watch it on oh, YouTube. Oh, Vince, what's up? I'm going to just watch it on YouTube. I missed half the lesson anyway. Cool. No, that's fine. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate your attendance today. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, on YouTube in about an hour, it'll be up. So just watch it again, and we'll go through it. Okay. Yeah, what well, he said. I'll just watch, I'll just rewatch the thing on YouTube. That's why I think the YouTube thing is great too. I mean, same thing in class. A lot of times when I teach these lessons, you guys, it kind of flies over your head at a certain point or your brain just stops uh, firing any sort of engine piston and you kind of shut off. But now that these things are being recorded, you can go back in at your own pace and, you know, basically figure out, you know, those little bits and pieces, rewind, fast forward, try to get those things going. Anything else from anybody? <laughs> do, do, do. Nothing. Nothing. Well, thank you all for joining in. This has been Mr. O'Toole. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your patience. We appreciate you coming in and spending time with us. And for everyone here at a blank household, we will see you tomorrow brightly at 10 a.m. We out. <laughs>